Hey everyone and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So I'm here with my first book haul of 2023 and we're all saying that didn't take much time. It didn't. Um, what I have here is a bunch of books that were gifted to me. Um, I also have a really new exciting book club that I want to talk to you about that they so graciously sent me um, some books from that to talk about. Um, I have a couple of arcs. I've got a whole variety of things that have come into my house in the last few weeks. So let's get started. The first one I want to talk about is Aardvark Book Club. So it is a monthly book club subscription that you have that I think it's $17.99 a month for a brand new hardcover book, which is, that is, that's a deal guys. And then any additional books that you purchase that month are $9.99. Again, hardcover books for 10 bucks. Um, you can have three books a month from their selection. Of course, the first book you pick has to be from that month's books. Um, it is a membership type of a book club. Um, if you don't like any of the picks that month, you're, you just earn a credit that you can use on a future purchase. Um, but yeah, I think it's really exciting. And I love how unique these books are that they sent to me. So I have a couple of them to share with you. So they come in this really fun, colorful box. And inside... Um, you get a book club for each book that you have that you got that month that month um, and then a cute little postcard uh, so and the postcards are different the other box that I have they um, have like a little word search on the back which I'm definitely gonna be doing but I just like I get a book club I get a bookmark for each book that I got so let's talk about what I have um, first book is Ithaca by Claire North. Super pretty cover in my opinion. So this is the story of Penelope of Ithaca, famed wife of Odysseus. As it has never been told before, beyond Ithaca's shores, the whims of God of gods dictate the wars of men. But on the isle, it is the choices of the abandoned women and their goddesses that will change the course of the world. So it just follows her story. These pages are so soft. Wow. So that's the first one. The other one I have is Closer to Okay by Amy Watson. Let's see. We have Kyle Davies is doing fine. She has her routine ingrained in her from years of working as a baker. Wake up, make breakfast, prep the dough, make lunch, work the dough, make dinner, bake dessert, go to bed, wash, rinse, repeat. It's a good routine. Comforting almost enough to help her forget the scars on her wrist still healing from when she slid it a few weeks ago and that she lost her job at the bakery when she checked herself in as an inpatient at Hope House and then signed away all decisions about her life, medical care and well-being to Dr. Booth, who may or may not be a hack. So yeah, she's doing fine. Sounds like she's not. So again, I have not heard of any of these books, so I don't know if I'm just missing out or what. Um, then I also have Factory Girls, super interested in this one, Michelle Gallen. So this one is a funny, fierce, and unforgettable read about a young woman working a summer job in a shirt factory in Northern Ireland while tens tensions rise both inside and outside the factory walls. And it takes place in the 90s. And I'm really interested in this one. And then I have None of This Would Have Happened If Prince Were Still Alive by Carolyn Prusa. And I just added a word to that title. <laughs> None of this would, ha would have happened if Prince were alive. Um, so Ramona, Ramona's got a bratty boss, a toddler teetering through toilet training, and a critical mom who doesn't mind sharing her opinions. And I have one of those too. And oops, turns out her husband's been cheating on her. Don't have one of those, I don't think. <laughs> That's how a category for her came bearing down on her life in Savannah becomes just another item on her to-do list. In the next 48 hours, she'll add a neighbor child, a class guinea pig named Clarence, Thomas to her entourage as she evacuates town, attempting to ignore the persistent glow of her minivan's check engine light. Oh my. She navigates police roadblocks, bathroom emergencies, instructions from her boss, and torrential downpours while fielding calls and apology texts from her cheating husband, and longing for the days when her life was like a Prince song full of sexy creativity and joy. Well, that sounds like quite, quite the trip. So, um, these are the books that were sent to me from Aardvark Book Club. I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really excited for all of them. And again, really didn't have any of these on my radar whatsoever, but they all sound perfect for me. So if you are interested in checking out Aardvark further, I'm going to leave a link below for you to go check them out. I 
highly encourage you to check that out. I don't know. I think having a monthly book club has just broadened my horizons so much in the last few years. So highly, highly anticipate or and highly, highly suggest that one. All right. Couple of arcs that came into my possession. Um, I don't remember if I hauled this last one, but we have Beyond That the Sea by Laura Spence Ash. This is a um, historical fiction taking place in the 1940s. We have working class parents, Millie and Reginald, make an impossible choice. They decide to send their 11 year old daughter, Beatrix, to America from London, where they hope she'll stay safe. Sacred and angry, she arrives in Boston and to meet the Gregories who fold her into their world. She adjusts to their affluent lifestyle and grows close to both the boys, one older, one younger, filling in the age gap between them. Before long, before she even realizes it, life in America feels more normal to her than her quiet spare world back in England. As she comes into herself and relaxes into summers on the coast of Maine, the girl she has been begins to fade away until she's called home to London when the war ends. What I think is really awesome about this is at the bottom of every page, I don't know if you can see it, it tells you like what timeline we're in, the year or the month. So it's really easy to kind of keep track as to where you are. I did start this a little a couple days ago and it's, it's already got me interested. So I'm really excited for this. I believe this comes out in March. So super happy for that one. And then I got a, a package from Blackstone Publishing. And let me just tell you, I love this cover so, so much. So we have, it's a, it's a, Pignan Scorpion Mystery, Murder in Hexford by Rick Blueways. And I believe you don't have to necessarily read these in order. I think it's just kind of what they are. But historical fiction sounds like cozy mystery. We have 1910 Hat Hexford Spring Fair turns deadly when a balloonist plummets to the earth. However unlikely this unfortunate corpse has done is was not done in by his plunge, but instead from an arrow fatally lodged in his chest and then we investigate the murder. So it sounds really sweet. I'm loving this cover. Thank you, thank you, thank you to Blackstone Publishing for send me, sending me this one. Okay, um, then I have a pile of books from Lofty Ideas um, Bookshop. I'll leave a link to her below, but um, she did a advent calendar this year, and so I got my hands on one. And here are the books that were sent to me, and I'm so excited. I only already own one, and that's because I literally just bought it. So City of Thieves, I already have. Um, but she's spot on for sending me this because I'm already interested in it. Just bought it. Just picked it up. World War II historical fiction. Sounds great. So then we have The Couple Upstairs by Shalini Boland. A lot of these I have not heard of, so I'm super excited about that. And all this is, I believe thriller mystery it says I should never have become friends with the couple upstairs the first time I step inside the cozy apartment with its sash windows just minutes from the sea I think it would be perfect place for me and my partner to start again chance to leave our troubled past but then the couple upstairs they're so welcoming smiles flowers home-baked cakes it's strange how he does all the talking and she seems so shy but I'm just thrilled to have new friends but then things start going wrong I'm sure they do um, and then she sent me The Identicals by Ellen Hildebrand. Again, interested in her. I read her Winter Street not that long ago and really enjoyed it. Really like her writing. I think this would be a good palette cleanser for sure. Um, we have Professor Chandra Follows His Bliss by, I don't, I can't, not even going to try. Um, but we have a professor, Chandra is internationally renowned economist, divorced father of three, children and recent victim of a bicycle hit and run but so much more of more than the sum of his parts in the moments after his accident he doesn't see his life does he doesn't see his life flash before his eyes but his life's work he's just narrowly missed the nobel peace prize again and even though he knows he should get straight back to his pie charts his doctor has other ideas all this work all this success all this stress is killing him he needs to take a break start enjoying life in short says his doctor he should just follow his bliss. He shouldn't, he doesn't know it yet, but he's about to embark on a trip of a lifetime. And that sounds fantastic. We have Carnegie's Made by Marie Benedict. I need to read a Marie Benedict book. I think that should be a goal for this year. Um, it's the tale of the woman who inspired an American dynasty. I am all for it. I am a bit obsessed with the story of the Carnegie's. So this will just add to it. We have A House for Happy Mothers by Amula Maladi. 
Um, we have Silicon Valley. Priya is every has everything she needs, husband, career, home. But the one thing she wants most is the child she's unable to have. In a southern Indian village, Asha doesn't have much, raising two children in a tiny hut. She and her husband can barely keep a tin roof over their head, and she wants better education for her gifted son. Pressured by her family, she reluctantly checks into Happy Mother's House, a baby farm where she can rent her only asset, her womb, to a, children, to a childless couple overseas. To the dismay of friends and family, Priya places her faith in a woman she's never met to make her dreams of motherhood come true. Sounds like that's going to tug at my heartstrings, that's for sure. We have Stranger Diaries by Ellie Griffiths. I believe, are we diary format? Not really. Um, Claire Cassidy is a high school teacher specializing in gothic, in the gothic writer R.M. Holland, and she's no stranger to murder. When one of Claire's colleagues is found dead with a line from Holland's iconic story, The Stranger, left on her body, Claire's horrified to see her life colli collide with her favorite liter literature. The police suspect that the killer is someone Claire knows. Unsure whom to trust, she turns to her diary, her only outlet for her suspicions and fears, and one day she notices something odd. Writing that isn't hers left on the page in an old diary. Hello, Claire. You don't know me. Oh, <laughs> that's just spooky. I love it. We have Simon the Fiddler by Paulette Giles, who also wrote News of the World, so I'm a little hesitant because I wasn't a huge fan of News of the World, but I am definitely in to give it a whirl because let's just look at this beautiful end papers. Oh, I know, I know. Um, let's see. Texas Texas is this atmospheric, or sorry, this is set at the end of the Civil War in Texas about a ragtag band of musicians, an in, itinerant fiddle player, and the charming young Irish lass who steals his heart. Again, we'll give it a try. And then, last one I got was The Man with No Face by Peter May, which that title alone gives me the heebie-jeebies. Um, and I don't even want to know. I don't want to know anything about it. So sorry, man with no face. All right. So a couple of books that were gifted to me from my children and my fantastic husband. We have Jamie Ford's The Many Daughters of Afong Moy. I believe this kind of explores the idea of that we carry trauma from our past generations with us. So this kind of looks at what this specific line of women have gone through is what I'm understanding. It sounds really interesting. And then we have The Prisoner by B.A. Paris, another one I don't want to know much about because it's really skinny and I'm so afraid of something giving it away. Um, but I picked this one up, or I was gifted this one as well. They were just so ecstatic that they picked two books I didn't own already. So I do have to give them props for that. And then Barnes & Noble had 50% off their hardcover books. <sighs> I was only going to get two, and so I was sitting at the cafe whittling down my choices. My husband just picked up the whole stack and went and bought them. You know, he's pretty amazing sometimes. Anyways, first one I picked up, Blackwater Falls by Asuma Zahanet Khan, I believe. I like this cover. Um, basically, a bunch of girls um, in girls from an immigrant community have started disappearing over the course of a few months in a Colorado town. And the local sheriff is slow to act and calls for justice come out. And they start kind of figuring out what's going on. I was in for that. William Kent Krieger is Fox Creek. I have yet to read one of his books. So I need to get to them. But I picked up another one because it was 50% off and it's signed. So I, I, could, I couldn't resist that one. So I got it. Um, this was on one of my most anticipated book books before it came out. So Defending Alice, we have Richard Stratton wrote this one. It, is, it takes place during the Roaring, roaring Twenties um, in New York City. We have Alice is a blue collar woman with a mixed race father. And she marries Kip, the wealthy son of one of New York's elite society families. News of the marriage ignites the scandal when Kip and Alice or Kip then sues Alice for an annulment, claiming she defrauded him by hiring, hiding her Negro blood. So definitely will bring in some, I believe, thought-provoking. <laughs> so definitely sounds really interesting. It has me going. I'm interested in that roaring, tw that 20s timeline as well. Set me in New York and I'm all in for it. Um, also picked up Mother Daughter Trader Spy by Susan Elia McNeil based on a true story. So this one is June 1940, 
and we are set in Los Angeles. And so Violet and um, Veronica, so Violet's the mother, daughter Veronica, they're looking for a fresh start um, after a blunder caused their career opportunity in New York to kind of fall to the wayside. Um, so Veronica's relieved she's taken a typing job in LA only to realize she's working for one of the area's most vicious, vicious pro propaganda propagandists. That's a hard word. Um, overnight, Veronica's exposed to the dark underbelly of her new home where German Nazis are recruiting Americans for their devastating campaign. Um, after the FBI dismisses Grace's concerns, Veronica and Violet decide to call on an old friend who introduces them to LA's anti-Nazi spymaster and they kind of become this spy for them. So sounds really interesting and based on true events. So I'm here for that. And then I picked up The Lioness by Chris Bojalin. This has also been on my radar. So it follows a takes place in 1960s. We have Kate is a A-list a -list actress and her husband. They decide to take a bunch of their friends on a safari and it sounds like things don't go so well. So here for that as well. Um, is that everything? I think so. I think so until you know my book of the month books come. Oh well. So um, this is the last of books to be added to my shelf for a little bit and then I'm, I'm just gonna buckle down and we're gonna read so hold me accountable please if you've heard of any of these before and you think i should pick them up sooner th sooner than later please leave a comment below if you are not already part of the aardvark book club i highly suggest it i think it's well worth it i think it gives you a really cool variety of books to pick from again all links are below comment subscribe all that fun stuff and we'll see you next time bye <laughs>